In this lesson, we're going to have a look at object snaps or O snaps, and we use these to model accurately. And we want to model accurately because curves will form the basis of most of the geometry that we'll be drawing in Rhino. And you want to make sure that you get the ends of the lines and the midlines and just make sure you model accurately. As an example, I'm going to turn my grid snap off and I'm going to disable my O snap. So here is the panel with all the O snaps, so we'll disable those. And let's try to draw a rectangle using lines. So I'm going to type in line. Here's my start point, hold down shift. I'm going to zoom in over here and see if I can get the end of that point. Spacebar to repeat the command. Let's eyeball that. Hold down shift, spacebar to repeat the command, eyeball that again. And let's see if I can go over here and hold down shift. And you can see I'm already running into some trouble here. These lines are not joining. Here they're intersecting. And this is going to give me problems when I want to start making closed curves and using those closed curves for extrusions, etc. I'm going to enable my O snaps. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's start with end snap. So in our object snaps, I'm going to select end. And end simply means that I will snap to the end of a curve. So if I want to, to draw a line at the end of each end point of this curve, so let's type in line. And as soon as I hover on the end of that point, you'll see that it's going to tell me the beginning of my line is snapping to the end of that point. So I'm going to press enter, hold down shift, and there we go. Let's draw another line this time, maybe on both sides. Now I can activate and deactivate any of these O snaps while I'm modeling. So here I have end snap activated and you'll see when I hover, it will tell me when I'm there. Let's unclick that and you'll see that it no longer shows me when I'm at the end of that curve. So let's re-click that and snap to the end there and there we go. And so we can just continue modeling in this way and know that we're really hitting the end of all those curves. Similarly here, maybe I want to join these end to end, spacebar, end to end. And if I select all these curves here, and I can either type in join, or I can click this little puzzle icon here. And you'll see joining curves, four curves joined into one closed curve. One more example here. Maybe I want to draw a line from here to here, press spacebar, I could also do that with a polyline, polyline, enter, start of polyline, end to end to end. I'd like to run through the rest of the O snaps. So let's unclick end and let's have a look at near. Near means I'm near the curve, but more accurately, it means I am on the curve. So if I have this curve here and I wanted to start drawing some points, so I'm going to type in points, location of point object. As soon as I am on the curve, anywhere on the curve, it's going to tell me I'm near. And so I can place points there. So if, if it doesn't say near, even if I'm very close, you'll see that it's not on the curve and here I'm on the curve. Let's try a near and tangent. For example, I could have a line that is near and I'm going to switch on tangent and it's going to tell me when I'm tangent to that curve. Let's do that again. I am near and tangent. There we go. Point pretty self-explanatory. So let's switch point on. If I wanted to join these with lines, 
I'm going to hover over point to point, spacebar point to point, spacebar point to point. So now I know that this curve, these two curves, and this point are all exactly in the same location. Let's draw a polyline here. Point to point to point and close that polyline. This can also be handy when you want to draw curves. So maybe we can do a curve interpolate points. And we're just going to snap to these points. Midpoint will tell us where the midpoint of a curve is. So I have these two different lines here and I want to snap from midpoint to midpoint. So I'm going to activate midpoint down here in my O-snaps and hover until it says midpoint. Hover over this curve and that's the midpoint of that curve. Similarly with rectangles, I can find the midpoints here. Midpoint to midpoint. midpoint of two arcs hover until i see midpoint to midpoint center snap is great for closed curves such as circles rectangles any kind of polygon um, so i'm going to put a point in the center of this circle now you'll see that when i'm actually trying to find the center it does not tell me where the center is rhino really wants me to tell it where the curve itself is. So once I hover over the curve, you'll see a little line and a blue square in the middle telling me where the center is. So if I go back to the center, it disappears. So what I want to do is when I'm on this curve, just left click and it will place a point in the center. Let's do that again. Let's actually place a circle in the center of this rectangle. So I'm going to type in circle and I'm going to hover until I see center. And there we go. I know that circle is in the center of that rectangle. We could do that again with a rectangle, find the center of that circle. And there we go. Similarly here, let's place a circle in this in the center of this triangle intersection o snap will just tell me when two lines intersect so if i want to create another line perhaps on both sides from the intersection of these two lines i can hover and click type some more lines here and you'll see that intersection is not just where two lines clearly intersect but for example here you can see these two lines intersect as well and these as well from here to here all these lines intersect so I'm just pressing spacebar and going from intersection to intersection I can do two object snaps at the same time, intersection and perpendicular, for example. Let's draw a line at the intersection and I'm going to hover until I am perpendicular to this rectangle. Let's try that again from this intersection until I am perpendicular to this rectangle. Quadrant will give me the quadrant of a circle, which means at midnight, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, or 9 o'clock. So let's try that. Draw another line, and I'm going to hover until I see quadrant. Similarly, I can go from this quadrant to this quadrant or this quadrant to that quadrant. 
tangent is also pretty self-explanatory so let's select tangent and I have a point here so I'm going to select point as well and let's draw a couple of lines enter first I'm going to snap to the point and then when I hover over this curve here as soon as I am tangent it will tell me spacebar to repeat that command from the point to the tangent lastly not so I just want you to know the difference between edit points and control points and knots. So we've covered control points a fair amount. So just as a reminder, control points are the points that determine the shape of the curve. And as you remember, when we type in curve, we can have different degrees of a curve. So if I select this curve here, and I also want to point out here, we have control points off or control points on. So let's just switch those points off. You'll see that I don't see my control points. So let's switch those back on again. So I can either go here and say points on, show object control points, or I can type in points on. So these are my control points, which I then can move around. Now edit points are slightly different. They are points on a curve at the knot average. Now when you think of a knot, if you think of a, a rope and you have a knot in the middle of the rope and you sort of hang the rope, if you leave it slack, where the knot weighs down, that's basically a knot. And the edit point will give you the average between those knots. So let me switch this on. And this time I'm going to turn my points off, but I'm going to turn my edit points on. So you'll see that this gives me the average, at the, the knot average. And I can use these as well to change the shape of my curve. So if we click on the knot object snap and let's create a rectangle for argument's sake. And I'm going to hover and you'll see it'll tell me let's do a three point rectangle it's my first point my second point and my third point let's do that one more time first corner of rectangle i'm going to do three points again here's my first point my second point and my third point so i know that all those curves are intersecting exactly or they're meeting exactly at that point